Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect. I hope you're having a great day and making it an awesome one. Big news coming in, Photoshop released a brand new feature called Depth Blur. That's what they're calling it. And the way it works is that, or the way it is supposed to work is that it's gonna give a depth map to the image that you can use to focus on any object. You can create background blur or you can focus on the background and blur the foreground. Do whatever you want. It's a very versatile feature. Today, we're gonna test it with a ton of images. We're gonna test it with simple backgrounds, complex backgrounds, humans, animals, group photos, and whatnot. We have a lot of examples, a lot of fun to do. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the mysterious world of Photoshop and have a look at this image. This is such a simple image. If Photoshop doesn't do this, I don't know what it's doing. Anyway, first of all, let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Then let's go to filter and then neural filters. Inside of that, you'll find a new thing. Just make sure you update Photoshop to the, to the latest to the latest version. Now let's turn on depth blur. This is a brand new feature and Photoshop admits that it's in beta. Now all you gotta do is to increase the blur strength and it's supposed to blur the background. Now it is a cloud feature. So no matter how fast your computer is, this is gonna be slow. That's what it means. Actually, it means that it's gonna use the internet to apply that feature. It's gonna go to Adobe servers and then from there it'll come back. And it pretty much does a pretty good job. But then again, when I zoom in, have a look. The transition here is so harsh. If I just decrease the focal range, maybe it'll work. It just makes the depth more shallower. There you go, it is a little better. Also, it gives you the option to choose where you want to focus. So you can click on a focal point. Let's say I'm gonna focus on this lady's head. And again, it's gonna take time to process. All right, so this is what we get, but I don't really get it. Why is it just blurring her behind? Is it censoring it, Photoshop? Even with such a simple image, it's kind of messing up. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see how it does pets. Lots of dog lovers in here. Let's try it on that. Please know that if you're under the impression that it's doing it super fast, just know that it's a video editing trick. It's taking its time. I'm just cutting it out. Anyway, so it has done a good job, but then again, have a look. There is this just stark change. Now, what we can do, we can try decreasing the focal range, but then again, look at the tail. It's also blurring that. It's in the same focal plane, at least similar. Instead of doing all that, let me share with you a traditional method that's gonna work always. Now, let me show you something. Even Photoshop's older technology that Adobe created, actually, does better than the newer technology. So in this case, if I simply click on Select Subject, it does a better selection of the subject. <laughs> look at it. Now, all we have to do is to put the dog on a separate layer, press Ctrl or Command J. You can also create a mask and then just improve that later. I'm gonna fast forward the process. Press Ctrl or Command J, it's on its own layer. Also, for the background, we wanna just erase it. We wanna take the dog away from that. So we made the same selection. And then let's just expand it by going to Select, Modify, and then Expand. Expand it by 30 or 40 pixels, and then fill it with Content Aware Fill. Go to Edit, and you can try Content Aware Fill or directly fill Content Aware Fill. It also does a pretty good job. And after it fills that, well, you can simply blur it to your liking. Now let's turn on the dog right over there and select this background layer. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and then Tilt Shift. It'll be faster, accurate, and cool. So let's bring this point where you want the focal plane to be. And this is where you want the blur to start, the solid line. And this dashed line is where you want the blur to end gradually it goes to that level. So if I say that the blur is at about 49 pixels, here the blur is zero and gradually it increases to 49 over this dashed line and beyond that it's 49. All right, hit okay. And as you can see, it's even more accurate than the neural filters. Look at the tail, it got it all. Now I haven't even used the refined hair or any of that fancy features, but still, so easy, so quick better results. Let's go for an image which is a little more complicated and let's see how it does. Now this is one of those examples where you definitely need to blur the background because there's so much disturbance and you want the audience eye to focus on the subject, but I don't have high hopes from Photoshop. I'll probably trust my good old pen tool with probably my brush tool to do the hair. Look, again, it's censored the wrong areas. Look, this area is censored again and some areas it just brought in. I don't know why this tree is focused and everything is blurred. Now, one great thing about this feature is one positive. If there are a lot of negative, there has to be a positive thing. One positive thing is there is an option to output the depth map and you can improve on that. We'll get to that later in later examples. But if you check that, you'll see that it lets you play with the depth map that it creates. It doesn't keep it under the hood. All right, 
Let's move on to the next one. Now let's see how it does group photos. Sometimes we want some faces on focus, some faces blurred, and we want to create a shallow depth of field. So if we can use Photoshop to, let's say, focus on this guy's face and have these girls blurred out, let's see if we can do that. And if we can do that, how good the results would be. So uh, right now it looks okay, but if I click on this guy's face right here, where it says create a focal point, and now let's see if these girls get blurred or not. Now keep in mind, I'm wading through the process using the magic of editing to cut it out. So it does a good job, but then again, you see that? You see that rough transition? You can decrease the focal range and see how it does. But then again, I would say that this technology has definitely a lot of potential, but at the time of recording this video, it is not polished yet. So yes, it does a better job and maybe we can go with this. Maybe it is a little usable if you upload it on social media. Maybe we can get away with it. Now, here's an example where it's going to be actually helpful to you in the real world. I'm not kidding. And this is when you use the depth map here. So in this case as well, let's go to filter and then neural filters. And instead of applying all that blur, I just want to export the depth map. Now, definitely there are lots of sliders that you might have wanted to learn about like the haze the warmth they just add haze warmth and brightness according to the depth you can try that so if you increase the haze you would notice that the things which are further away would have more haze but now we have to wait because photoshop is processing it in its own server in its own time and this is what we get not impressive let's just not apply that only the thing we want here is the depth map that's it once you have the depth map you can just do anything with it anything you want this is a pretty good depth map, just hit OK. Now, how can we use this depth map? First of all, let's make a copy of the background layer. Press Ctrl or Command J with the background layer selected. With the depth map at the top, let's go to Channels, hold the Ctrl or Command and click on the thumbnail of RGB. Now, click on the New Channel button. Now, in this New Channel button with the selection active, make sure the foreground color is white. Press Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill with it. Now you have an alpha channel and you can use this as a depth map. You can delete it at the top that you just generated the depth map in the layers section, but it should be there in the channel section as alpha one. You can name it whatever you want. Now with the background copy selected or whatever you have named the copy, let's go to filter, blur and then lens blur. Now this is one of those filters where you can actually use that depth map. So you can choose the source as alpha one. Now you have to tell Photoshop, where do you want to focus? That's it. If you click here, this area would be focused. If you click on the background, that area would be focused so much more better than depth blur, right? So let's click here. And there are lots of sliders here to control the depth of field and its parameters. I'm just going to hit okay. And you can use the same mask to do a bunch of stuff. So let's say I go to channels, hold the controller command, click on it to make a selection based upon that. And based on it, we can create a curves adjustment layer right? The further away areas are brighter, the closer areas are darker. That's it. That's what a depth map is. We're going to explain that in a moment, but you can add brightness based on depth. So if you want far away areas to be more brighter, you can make it brighter. Or if you want far away areas to have more haze, just fade it like this. It's way more realistic than doing it with a depth blur. Now, if you're new to Photoshop, one question that might come to your head, and that is what is a depth map. A depth map is simply a map of depth. Now, what does a map do? Well, a map tells you where things are. That's it, right? A depth map tells you where things are in terms of depth. A depth map will tell you, all right, this object is closer to the camera and this object is further from the camera. And how does it tell you that? Well, in this case, the objects which are brighter are further away from the camera and the objects which are darker are closer to the camera. The brighter they are, the further away the object is. The darker they are, the closer the object is. So in this case, white would be the furthest, black would be the closest. And that's how depth maps work. Now we have seen humans, animals, group photos. What about cars? What about objects? Let's try a car right over here. Let's just drag it and drop it. And on this one, let's just skip ahead to depth blur. Now, as you can see, this is pretty okay, but still not acceptable. Have a look at the roof of the car. It kind of blurred it. And I'm not a fan of that. It doesn't look realistic. Even if you try to place a focal point here, it still doesn't work. Besides, the most beautiful part of a car is just blurred censored again.
So if you scroll down, even if you try to generate a depth map from it, have a look, it's not in the same plane here. Coming to a final example, here we have a very complicated background, but still we can make out where the subject is. It is a little contrasting also. The background is just too crowded and taking our attention away from the subject. Maybe this time it'll work. Let's keep our fingers crossed. I gotta say, it is one of the very few times when it improved the image and it looks okay. Now, there are definitely some mistakes here. It also just didn't blur the pool there. I get it, but still, we can forgive Photoshop on this. It has done a splendid good job. Now again, there are some artifacts here and there, but we can easily fix that later. It's one of the very few examples where it worked. What I would do if you ask me, I'll just output the depth map and just go from there and just use lens blur to blur it. Or if you honestly ask me what I would do, I wouldn't use any of these features because most of them are so destructive. I would rather just make a selection of the subject using select subject and use tilt shift to kind of blur the background. Now tilt shift also has a feature where not only you can go in one plane, you can create other planes as well. So you can create other points as well. And we have a video about it. You can check it out right over here. Thank you again so very much. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a good overview of the depth blur feature. It's still a hit or miss, still not polished, but I see a huge potential here. This video is made possible by all of these nice and amazing people who support Piximperfect on Patreon and help keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. If you want to support Piximperfect, just go to patreon.com slash Piximperfect or click the link in the description to receive some rewards, perks, and also monthly Q&A sessions exclusive. And if you don't want to support on Patreon, that's absolutely fine. As long as you're watching Pix Imperfect on YouTube, that really means the world to me. Thank you so very much again. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.